So we have the ATSEX uh, firmware installed now on the ATS20. And uh, I'm just going to run through the differences and the way the radio now operates with the firmware installed. So we'll just turn on the ATS20. Let it boot up and you'll see with the boot screen that we've got the new firmware installed. And uh, I'll just turn the uh, volume down. I'll just mute it in fact, there you go. Um, so we can see we've got the display and the display is an improvement over the original. But it's not only the display that's changed, there's quite a few other features. Um, some of the button presses on the front of the radio uh, have also changed. So to select a band now, um, we press band plus. I'll just press that there. And you'll see that um, the SW is illuminated in the bottom left of the display. And we can scroll up and down the uh, bands. It should wrap around. Will it wrap around there to FM? Okay. But we've got medium wave there. We've got long wave, medium wave. And then the various shortwave bands. So that's the uh, band selector button. Uh, the band minus button now. If we give that a short press, we come into the menu selection. I'll go into the menus a little bit later, but that's your uh, menu selection. Um, but if we do a long press of the band minus, I'll just come out of there. If we do a long press of the band minus button, you can see we scroll quickly through the various bands. The volume buttons now, um, if we press the um, uh, volume plus, a uh, short press on the volume plus button, we can scroll up and down the volume settings. I'll just use that to turn the volume right down because there's no antenna connected at the moment. Um, we can press and hold the volume plus button for a quick volume increase. The volume minus button invokes a mute. I can see we've got an M in the top right of the display there. To adjust the uh, steps, the tuning steps, we want a short press on the uh, step button here. Give that a short press and you can see now the ST is illuminated. It's timed out so let's do it again and then we can scroll through the various uh, tuning steps that we've got. We can either let that time out and it'll sit there or if we were to press the step button again quickly it will come out of that. We've also got an S meter um, on this uh, firmware so if we do a long press on the step button okay you can see there's nothing underneath there at the moment but if there were a signal, we'd get a bar graph. And I'll show you that uh, when I tune run with the receiver. So you've got a simpler display, but at the bottom, underneath the frequency, you would have a bar graph S meter there. And we'll see that uh, shortly when we tune run the bands with the new firmware. Now, the um, AGC button, if we press the AGC button, a short press turns the display off. Okay, so uh, if we press it again, We've got the display on and a long press switches to a synchronous mode when SSB modulation is active. So we're in AM at the moment, a long press there does nothing. The bandwidth adjustment, we've got a bandwidth button here so we can press that and then using the encoder, these are the uh, f um, receive bandwidths that we've got available. Uh, now that should just time out if we leave it alone. There it goes. That's straightforward enough. Mode button here, right next to the tuning control, switches us through the various uh, modes we've got available. So we've got uh, lower sideband. You can see, incidentally, the um, uh, S-beat has come to life there. We've got upper sideband. We've got CW. I'm back to AM. Um, frequency, of course, is changed by uh, rotating the encoder, uh, having set the frequency step, as I showed you earlier. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the menu, uh, which is unique to this software, as far as I know anyway. The earlier uh, upgrades to these uh, ATS-20s didn't have this function. So if we press the band minus button, give it a... There we are. Press the band minus button. 
we have now this little menu and we can scroll through the menu using the encoder and if we want to alter one of these features we press the encoder button for example uh, the attenuation there and you can see we've got um, various choices looks like it's 0 to 37 I'll leave that on auto press the encoder again and we can move on to the next point of the menu so that was first one was attenuation we've got soft mute this is a number from 0 to 32 I'll just go into there it's on zero we want the minimum soft mute because that is the chuffing between the um, tuning steps and this firmware does reduce the chuffing to a great extent so that's very very useful um, so let's just come out of there SVC that is um, to enable or disable um, AVC automatic volume control for SSB um, we've got um, the synchronous which enables or disables the synchronous mode for a single sideband so you can see also we're on um, screen one of three if we press the band plus button here we can go to the next screen so um, that SCR that's a screen brightness setting and that's uh, a number between 5 and 125 we've got mine pretty much on the well close to the max 114 um, SW this gives us the frequency units in AM mode for the shortwave bands it can either be kilohertz or megahertz okay SSM that is soft mute mode it can only be RSS or SNR that's single sideband soft mute mode I'm not quite sure what effect that has but the adjustment is there nevertheless so we've got COF that's the SSB cutoff filter three modes on this setting on which gives us a band pass filter to cut off both the unwanted sideband and high frequency components I'll just go into um, it's on auto there as you can see at the moment so we've got on off or auto and in automatic mode it automatically turns on and off depending on the bandwidth so it's off when the bandwidth is higher than two kilohertz so that's interesting um, CPU there uh, that's the CPU frequency it's useful for battery serving for saving purposes it can be a hundred or fifty percent uh, when you're on fifty percent the CPU works on half of its own frequency it's slower but it saves battery there's an RDS set in there I'm not going to go into RDS at the moment because I'm concentrating on the uh, shortwave performance of this radio let's go to the third screen and uh, we've got a BFO setting which is a calibration setting so if you think SSB frequency is not precise you can calibrate it here um, the uni setting which says which is show or hide frequency units I'm guessing that's the kilohertz or megahertz legend on the display you could turn that off um, SCA uh, enables or disables the um, frequency scan so when you're in shortwave band or FM um, if you're on either AM mode on shortwave or obviously FM mode on, on band 2 FM pressing the encoder control will um, cause the radio to scan the band and finally uh, the CW setting here we can set that to either LSB or USB and that's the uh, the sideband mode if you like for the uh, CW uh, mode okay so that is the quick view of the settings and how the radio operates with the new firmware and come out there and um, we're back in the uh, normal frequency mode um, I'll show you now a quick tune on the uh, bands I did with this radio um, yesterday evening last night and you'll see that um, the S meter uh, functions quite well it's it's the best implementation of an S meter I've seen on one of these radios um, we'll also do a little bit of um, uh, SSB tuning but I'll quickly demonstrate all those no antenna I'll quickly demonstrate the theory of uh, SSB uh, tuning here so I'll go to uh, a band it doesn't really matter where we are 
Okay, but we'll come on to uh, 3995, which is actually an AM uh, frequency for a broadcast station. But let's switch to the uh, mode button. Okay, and so now we're in um, LSB mode. Now, previously in the firmwares, in order to accurately tune an SSB station, see we're in one kilohertz steps here, but that might not be good enough. We'd have to switch again and it would give us like a fine tuning mode, but it was very, very fiddly. All we have to do now is if we go to the step, we can actually switch down to say um, 100 hertz steps there. And now we can tune that, I'll just come out of there. Now we can tune down in SSB mode in 100 hertz steps and we can clarify in our sideband station much, much easier. We haven't stepped out of the main uh, VFO control, which is something you had to do with the old firmware. So it's much, much easier to tune this radio on SSB. So I just thought I'd sum up before you see the, the little video of the tune round of this radio. Big advantages of this firmware, the instant advantages, the most ones, you know, the most apparent ones that I've seen. It reduces the chuffing, the soft mute into, um, it, it's still kind of just there, but it's reduced it greatly. So it's much more pleasant to tune the radio in AM, for example, through the bands. Tuning of single sideband is much simpler, much more logical, much better. Okay, the display, as you can see, is more pleasing to look at. I mean, it's a tiny display, let's face it. So um, if you've got poor eyesight, you might struggle with this display. My eyesight is not you know, brilliant, but I, I find this display just about okay. I can read everything on it. But it's just a more pleasant radio to use uh, with this firmware on it. And... Uh, also, as I said earlier, the implementation of the signal strength meter is the best I've seen uh, so far in these radios. So a worthwhile upgrade. And, uh, you know, let's be fair. Uh, in an earlier video, I showed you how, uh, certainly if you're UK based, and I'm sure it'll be similar in the US. Um, you know, obviously, um, you'll have to allow for your, your local taxes. But it's possible now to purchase one of these ATS 20 pluses for under 20 UK pounds delivered, now VAT paid, all that delivered to your door. Um, and for that price and with this firmware, it's got to be a bargain. It's well worth the upgrade. Um, the only issue I've had upgrading this radio is using the same receiver and the same programming lead, the same USB lead. I could not do the upgrade on my Windows 11 machine, although it recognized the uh, the lead. There was an issue with writing the uh, new firmware, writing the hex file. When I went over to my uh, obviously slightly older Windows 10 machine, it all went without a hitch, as you've seen in the uh, earlier video. So I'm thinking this is a driver issue that the Windows 11 machine as probably updated drivers it shouldn't have. But just something to look out for. It was a lot more straightforward to do this on a Windows 10 machine. So that's the look at the firmware itself. Here's a quick clip of me tuning around with the radio and you'll see how it performs. And thank you for watching. <laughs> Well, if by any chance one were to alight on her foot,
成凝住即在。Dirty and stuck to one's hands whenever they touched them.